Hello! Welcome back to D20 Sundays. Hope you like the new setup. I'm going to be changing it a little bit more. Probably replace this because it's, yeah, it's old. But can't complain what's free. Anyways, uh, welcome to D20 Sundays. My love for role playing games and where it kind of all started. Uh, don't mind the fan. I am currently burning inside my own skin. It's normal. Uh, so. I guess to explain my love for role-playing games and Dungeons and & Dragons, I have to explain kind of where the spark started. Oh, also, before I forget, next week there will be a D20 Sundays as always, as well as if you are in Atlanta at Dragon Con, you will have a chance of running into me. I'll be wearing some Jedi robes, looking all dapper and stuff, and I'll be, you know, hanging around there and having a good old fun time. So, if you're in Atlanta during Dragon Con, which is September 2nd, or actually the 30th through the 3rd, but I'll only be there for September 2nd because I have a busy life and I still have to work and a lot of other things and there's a floor i got to replace. Oh, man, there's a lot of stuff i got to do. Anyways, so September 2nd, I will be at Dragon Con, and I will be there for a good number of hours, so if I run into you, say hello, and have a wonderful time. Anyways, on to the video of my love for role-playing games. So... Where does my love for role-playing games, and thus Dungeons and Dragons, come from? Well, it comes from my childhood. It comes from a very specific point of my childhood, as well as a very specific person. The person being my brother. See, I have an older brother, three years older than me, uh, not as handsome, but bigger than me. So, Dylan is his name, and Dylan is a, well, he's a pretty awesome guy. Uh, back then, though, when we were kids and our parents were together we had what is essentially a Sega Genesis we had Sonic, Boogerman, I think a Batman game uh, something called Zoops some sort of like Bejeweled, no not Bejeweled, like Bust a Move or something it was kind of a weird game um, we had a lot of games for the Sega Genesis like uh, NBA Samurai Sh Showdown. We had Samurai Showdown. That was also another fun one. Uh, we had a lot of these games. And I wasn't very good at reading at the time. <laughs> because I was like five or six. So I wasn't very good at reading. Like, I could read basic stuff, but, you know, big words were hard for me. And strange words were hard for me. So that was fun and all that. And then when my parents divorced, my, you know, I stayed with my mom, my brother, and my sister, you know, went with my dad. And then one day, while I was visiting my dad, my brother, and my sister for, you know, my weekend with them, and I saw my brother had an N64. I was like, whoa, it's an N64. We had GoldenEye, 007 GoldenEye for the N64 for the longest time. And then uh, my dad got a computer, a Windows 95 computer that he got for work. He had to do some sort of spreadsheets or something, I can't really remember. But he also got Ultima 4 on it, and I got to play Ultima 4 for the first time ever on a computer with Windows 95. It was the greatest graphics of all time. I'm kidding, it was not the greatest. But it was the most powerful computer that he could afford, and it was crap. But it was great at that time. It was amazing. It's like, this is a computer that could fit into the room and everything. So we learned to play Ultima 4 on the computer, and it was awful. It was amazing, but it was awful, and we loved it. My brother taught me how to read better with that game because he played it with me, and playing that game together inspired me to read more, to get better at reading, so that way I didn't have to wait for my brother to help me in order for me to essentially beat a game by myself. And then... Uh, my brother got a bunch of other games for the N64. It was like... Uh, Legend of Zelda, Orcarina of Time, Majora's Mask, uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Mario Party, Mario 64, uh, there was another one, I can't remember what the last one was, some sort of Combat Aces with, uh, I think it was Combat Aces, it was like fighter jets with these weird special powers and all that stuff, anyways, they were all amazing, and we played those games so much, and we once again tackled Legend of Zelda together like we both had our own save files of course but whenever we couldn't figure something out we'd work together to try and figure out a solution before we could beat it and everything and then finally 
my brother one day decided to trade in his N64 and all of his games, which was his right. It, they were his. He was allowed to do that. There was no way I could, you know, protest, say, hey, I didn't want you to do that. It was his. He traded in for PlayStation 1 and a bunch of games, a few of which were actually those, you know, Pizza Hut demo games that you got. Like, if you order a large pizza, you get a free demo disc with all these different games on them. Man, those things were awful. They were awesome, but they were awful. They were awesome. Awful some. Eh. Uh, but those games, those demos, kind of like helped spark my love for video games and role playing games even more. Yeah, there was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater on there. There was some sort of uh, Dark Stalkers or something, some, some sort of fighting game on there. Uh, there was a bunch of them, like a, like a monster truck ra game, a racing game. But there was also Brave Fencer Musashi. There was also Final Fantasy VIII. Now those of you who know me, you know that Final Fantasy VIII is one of my top five Final Fantasy games. And the reason being is that it's honestly the one of the best to me. It holds a very personal spot to me, but at the same time I fully understand the story and what they were trying to accomplish. So me and my brother played that demo for Final Fantasy VIII so many times. We played it so many times that that disc stopped working. That's right, the Pizza Hut demo disc with all these different games on it stopped working. And it's like, wow, we need to get another one of these. But we were so prepared by playing that demo that when we got the actual game, we were not prepared. Because they changed things from like what the demo beginning said, or the demo said the beginning was, and what the actual beginning was. They changed some of the characters, they changed some of the dialogue, they changed some of the things that you could do. And it was like, wow, this game's even better than we want. And it's four discs long? Oh man, this game is going to be long and awesome. And it was. At least to us then. It was amazing. And me and my brother, because back then you only had one memory card, two if you were rich, but no, we only had one. We had one memory card, and we shared the saves together because, honestly, that was the only way we could make sure we had enough saves for everything to play all the games that we got. And playing through Final Fantasy VIII with my brother was an adventure. Not just the game, but playing that with someone, playing it with him. We had a notebook like this thick with every single seed test answer, every GF and where to find them, how to best level them up, how to make yourself immune to all status effects, how to make yourself absorb all elemental damage, the best junction methods, the best strategies for beating which boss you're currently against, and all that. We figured all of that out by ourselves, without the internet, with pen and paper, playing through the game multiple times. And we did it together and that solidified to me in my mind as to what a role-playing game should be it should be an adventure hopefully one that you can share with someone else but for the most part it should be an adventure it should be an amazing story and an adventure and fun to beat and play now that being said I have played some terrible terrible role-playing games and still kinda like them because like ah, you know it's bad like it's bad but it's still kinda good I kinda like it and then there was something I played that's like this needs to be burned it's so bad it's just just awful fucking awful and Final Fantasy 8 was just that crowning game to us for the longest time and then we found Final Fantasy 7 and people kept telling us no 7's better than 8 7's better than 8 and we played 7 and it was also really good I wouldn't say it's better than 8 but it was really good and honestly I'll get into the argument as to which which Final Fantasy is better another time. That is not a D20 Sundays video. But I will, I'll do that video if you want it. Um, but the idea of that adventure playing together, you know, that was it. I love Final Fantasy VIII so much that I still own copies today. In fact, this is my fourth copy that I have. Uh, the fourth copy I've ever owned. There was the one copy that me and my brother owned, and then there was the three that I bought on my own, and this is the third one. And the reason being is because I played this game so much that the discs stopped working. This is the only copy of mine that still works. The others don't work anymore. They stopped working. They don't work anymore because I played the crap out of them, and those discs don't last. 
they scratch very easily. They get, you know, nicks and marks very easily. They're not as sturdy as the current, you know, Blu-ray discs or the current discs that we use for the PS4 or the Xbox One. Or the current PC discs, or, if, you know, if you still use discs for your PC. The, uh, these discs back then were not that sturdy. So, you know, if you played the game too much, it would just wear out. Which, you know, is bound to happen. But at the same time, the, that whole adventure truly sparked what I felt like an RPG should be. And I've just played role-playing games ever since. I've played through most, if not all, of the Final Fantasies. Uh, I've played uh, all the Legend of Zelda... Well, not all of the Legend of Zelda's. Probably at least five or six of the Legend of Zelda's. I've played... <laughs> I've played so many games. Dark Souls, Monster Hunter... Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn for the newer ones. I've played so many role-playing games that most of the library that I could call back to for every game that I've played has been mostly RPGs. Now, as to what that has to do with Dungeons and Dragons, it was my love for role-playing games that led me to play Dungeons and Dragons. You see, by playing all these different role-playing games, I realized that they kind of had a similar system all, you know, most of them. Final Fantasy, no matter which one you go to, has a very certain similar uh, system when it comes to your chance to hit and your experience points and your strength going up per, you know, or your stats going up with every, you know, time you level and everything. I was looking through it, and I was looking through it, it's like they're all the same, they're all based off of something. And then I realized they're kind of based off of Dungeons and Dragons. The game itself is your dungeon master. Role-playing games are an adventure for when you don't have a game master or a party. So you play a role-playing game and you know your dungeon master is the game and you are one of the players. And that made so much sense to me and then I finally ran into Dungeons and Dragons players that were willing to take me on and these were Gygaxian motherfuckers. They were, you know, original Dungeons and Dragons people. You know, one of them was like 60 years old, and here I am, like 20, and I'm like, wow, you've been playing this game since it first came out? And he's like, yeah. It's like, you know, he's an old Marine, but, you know, here he is, throwing dice like the rest of us. Mind you, every person in that group is older than I am, and they all had been playing since the start of, you know, Dungeons and & Dragons. And I'm just like, dang, it's amazing. But yeah, and I'm like... I, I want to play, and they let me in. And then my love for Dungeons and Dragons started because I was already curious about it because of all the role-playing games I played. But then going from playing Final Fantasy, Legend of Zelda, uh, Star Ocean, and then going to Dungeons and Dragons and seeing that versus the games, which was your limitations were the hardware, the software, the actions programmed into the game, the story itself was your limitation because you weren't really allowed to deviate or make changes. But in Dungeons and Dragons, your only limitation is your imagination. If I want to derail the campaign, I can. And I will. And it'll take a very good Dungeon Master to keep me from doing that. But, the idea that I could completely subvert whatever story or plan that the villain has because I thought outside of the box and went with a solution that was not in the book. And the story could still progress going off of my solution versus what was in the book was amazing. I remember one time in these, you know, with these Gygaxian guys, we were playing and I got explosives. And my rogue, or thief as it was back then, stared at them and I was like, Ho! Oh, this is dynamite. I'm holding a bunch of dynamite. I got an idea. I leveled part of the temple that we were supposed to uh, destroy, essentially. Uh, I was like, hey, you guys, you know, you go take care of the East Wing. I got the West Wing. He was like, sure, yeah. Just don't worry about it. I got it. And I like, you know, there's probably valuable stuff. It's like, if it was truly magical and valuable, it would have survived the explosion. And otherwise, we didn't want it anyways. I destroyed that whole half of the, you know, the temple. The DM was a little miffed at first because he was like, there was a mini boss in there you were supposed to fight, but oh well, I guess he's buried under rubble. Yeah, that was fun. 
Um, nothing like, you know, jumping onto the back of a dragon, using your daggers, digging into its back, holding on for dear life, because you made a error in judgment. But hey, who else could say that they rode the back side of a dragon with their daggers plunged in, holding on for dear life, and afraid of falling, because they're actually afraid of heights. <laughs> oh man, those adventures back then. But th that's the story of where my love of role-playing games started, and where the role-playing games helped me jump to Dungeons and Dragons so easily because I was already enamored with the idea of being in a story, being a part of a story, writing a story, and so on. In fact, because of joining that Dungeons and Dragons group, I got into the Forgotten Realms books, I got into the Dragonlance books, I started reading oh so many different things, and it was just mind-blowing and like eye-opening to me. I started writing again because I had not written or tried to write a story in over three years because I didn't really have anyone to write with or write for and I didn't know what to write. And then joining Dungeons and Dragons was just a completely, you know, mind-blower for me. Yeah, I played, you know, World of Warcraft before then and that was also mind-blowing at first. But then, you know, I've been sober from a Blizzard game for four years now, and I will not go back. I have been sober from a Blizzard game for four years now, and I will not go back. Ever. I play Dungeons and Dragons now. It's cheaper-ish, and it's more fun. Anyways, I think I've rambled on enough. Thank you for joining me for this D20 Sundays, and as always... I'll catch you next time, and next week, I'll see you at DragonCon. Laters.